Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I want to show you how I made this scarf pin, the one on the right. The one on the left is one that I purchased. So you don't need too many materials in order to do this, it's a really fun project. I am using Swarovski crystals because I think they sparkle beautifully and also this little pot and some foam. I'm using some polymer clay and you can see this one's super soft and easy to work with and this one's not quite as soft but it's still pretty easy to work with. You're also going to need some straight pins. I picked these up from a local craft store as well as these polymer clay tools, which are optional. I also have some moss for the top of our flower pot. So the first thing you're going to do is cut a piece of this florist foam and we're gonna put it inside that little ceramic pot. We're gonna cut off the extra pieces, but don't toss those. We're gonna use all those little extra pieces to fill in all of these gaps because we want that foam to be all around because this is where we're going to be storing our straight pins. So I'm just using these little extra pieces and you can see that it is now completely filled. And the next thing we want to do is glue our moss on top. Now I've got two pieces of moss to choose from. This one is actually real moss, but this one here that's a little bit darker green, I think this is probably synthetic and it's super soft. So I'm going to go for the really soft one. I had two glues, but I'm going to just use my Tombow Mono Adhesive. In the past, I have used a glue gun, but that was not a good idea because the glue dries hard and then you can't put your little straight pins through it. This one does dry soft, and I did put quite a bit of it in, but you don't need that much. You want to make sure that you have enough of that foam exposed in order to store your straight pins. So they're looking pretty good. I did leave them dry for a really long time because this is a slow drying glue. I noticed that it needed just a little bit extra so I went back in and I just made sure that I had glued down everything because over time it's going to kind of fall apart a little bit. I did these many years ago and they held up pretty well but you want to make sure it's well glued. I've got this polymer clay and you want to make sure that it is nice and clean. There's a little bit of another color in there and this is the really soft kind which makes it really easy to work with and my daughter who is seven is going to be working along with me so it's good to use a soft polymer clay. I'm just gonna separate this into two smaller pieces so that I can put a piece of that polymer clay on the front and back of this straight pin. It makes it a lot easier to have that little plastic piece on top. It ensures that your polymer clay is going to stay adhered to your straight pin a lot better than if you used a straight pin without any plastic piece on top. I've got a variety of Swarovski crystals and so I am gonna just start putting these on to your polymer clay. Don't worry, we're going to bake it later. It's gonna be nice and sturdy. I'm gonna start with a single large piece right in the middle. I am gonna change this out later, but it actually looks good with both a large center piece and a small center piece. Now you can't tell here very well, but those are actually two different colors. They are very similar, and I have three different sizes here. So I start out by using a a large, fairly large center piece, but I'm gonna change that out. And the five petals around this flower are actually medium-sized Swarovski crystals. So it takes a little while to get them positioned correctly. And you can see me here now, I'm treating out for the small one, which actually doesn't look better, <laughs> but at least we have a variety because I made quite a few in the end. So I'm using one of these polymer clay tools here just to remove the excess polymer clay. It is a little bit easier to do it this way rather than to shape your polymer clay into a flower shape to begin with, but you can do either, whatever is easier. And if you have little cutouts, it might even be easier to use those. So once I get the excess out, now I'm going to shape it with my fingers and I'm just making sure that each one of those petals is a little bit more defined. I don't really want to use my nails because I don't want any sharp edges. And so once I get it to be basically what I want, I'm gonna use one of the other tools just to kind of soften the edges. And that's where the tools do come in handy, but I'm sure you could find something around your house, maybe even a pencil in order to do this. And so I just want to define each one of those petals. Now I used a white polymer clay with a little bit of shimmer in it, but honestly my favorite kind is the clear polymer clay. I think it makes for a more beautiful finished project. 
All right, so here are all the ones that we made. My daughter also made a number of them, and now it's time to bake them. So I've got a little bit of parchment paper, and now I'm gonna lay them all out so that they're not touching, and we're gonna put it in the oven. My temperature goes up to 170 degrees. You do not need to bake them for very long. I think I only bake them for about 14 to 15 minutes. So this is what they look like in the end. If your polymer clay is thicker, you may need to bake it longer. Do keep an eye on it. It does burn really easily. And this is what the little flower pot looks like in the end with all those beautiful scarf pins. This is a really fun and easy project. It's great as hijab pins, but it's also really beautiful on its own. I hope that you try this project out and don't forget that if you do, tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see your projects. If you wanna see some of the other projects that we're doing in our homeschool, I've left a couple of playlists here that might interest you. And don't forget that if you wanna see what we're up to on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.